Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Rain stays south of us to start the weekend, but find out how much of the two-day stretch is going to end up being a washout. Taken off the air for the rest of this season. Tonight, Fox Sports addresses the altercation between longtime broadcast partners Rod Allen and Mario Impemba. Also, Macomb County massage therapist off the job tonight is licensed suspended after pleading guilty to sexually assaulting customers. Glad you're with us tonight at 11. We are now hearing from two former clients who say he groped them and forced them to touch him. It happened inside Namaste Massage and Spiritual Wellness in Shelby Township near Hall Road in Shaner. Jermont Terry is live there tonight. Uh, Jermont, this all happened while they were getting a massage. That is correct, Kimberly. These women were clients of this masseuse for three years. So when he decided to open up his own business and relocate here to Shelby Township, they didn't hesitate to follow him. It's a decision they deeply regret now. Only another woman who's been sexually assaulted could really understand. These two women were once strangers, but now they're bonded in a way neither ever wanted. He groped me so he could penetrate me with his fingers. Lori Georges and Janet Wist share a pain. It, it went on for two hours. I froze. They carry a resentment. I still have nightmares. And both are working to trust people again. I don't want to do anything anymore. They were violated earlier this year when they came to the Namaste Massage and Spiritual Wellness Massage Parlor in Shelby Township. Back in March, their regular masseuse crossed the line. He had placed my hand on his groin. Janet's massage turned into a sexual assault. And then he picked my hand up and put it back. And then I knew I was in trouble. And this was within the first five minutes of the massage. The same day, Lori would get violated too. Just horrible, the, the feeling that they leave you. Nathan Isaiah Weems pled guilty to eight separate counts of criminal sexual conduct. But I felt horrible that someone else had been victimized like I had. As Weems awaits sentencing for what happened at the parlor, Lori and Janet fear others may have been violated. They want potential victims to know it's okay to speak out. No matter how humiliated you are, how embarrassed, disgusting and dirty, go make a report. Very courageous of those women to speak out tonight. The state revoked the massage license for Weems this week, and it was still believed that he was practicing at a different location up until he made this plea deal. That's why the women fear that there may be more victims out there. Tonight, Weems is out on bond, and, who, and he will be formally sentenced at the end of this month. For now, reporting live, Jermont Terry, Local 4. And what about the massage parlor? Uh, Jermont, is it still open? Kimberly, the massage parlor is still open. It is now operating and run, run by Weems' ex-wife. She tells me that she kicked him out the moment the allegations came to light, and she has since divorced him, but he now has no affiliation with this current location. Wow. All right. Thanks, Jermont. Well, a cool night here across Metro Detroit. Yes, we're going to have to get used to this because, well, we know it's coming eventually. Ben is tracking the cooler temperatures, but maybe showers too, huh, Ben? A little bit of both. And, you know, it's hard to believe earlier this week we were looking at heat index readings that were in triple digits, and now we hit 74 for a high temperature today. And we're getting even cooler as we head into the upcoming weekend. Here's where we sit right now, 64 at Metro, smattering of 50s here in our north and west zone, 59 in Lapeer, 57 and Howell and tomorrow I think all of us are going to stay in the 60s for high 69 for that metro zone high even cooler on Sunday. This is when Gordon arrives with the showers for the second half of the weekend. We'll talk about timing and how much we can expect and what could be a major disaster for the US East Coast. The latest on Hurricane Florence coming up in a few minutes guys. All right, Ben, there's going to be a change at the polls this November. Late tonight, the United States Supreme Court turned down an appeal on Michigan's ban on straight party voting. So that ban will be in effect for this November's election. That means voters will not be able to use that single mark to pick all the candidates of a single party. Uh, Republicans who didn't like straight party voting uh, say that voters should have to study candidates instead of simply choosing a party. Uh, Democrats who've supported it argue the change is going to lead to longer lines at the polls. Michigan State Police investigators are working to identify the human remains found in an empty lot in Ecorse. Those remains were found this afternoon right near the intersection of West Jefferson and Mill Street. 
Police are not saying much about the search, but we know drones were used and investigators left carrying large white bags. Neighbors say there hasn't been much activity at the abandoned site for quite some time. It's been years, been years, probably a good 10 years since I've seen anything going on here. It's just been an open, empty field. Ecorse police are taking the lead on the investigation. They won't, however, comment on the case except to confirm human remains were indeed discovered. There was no sign of Mario and Pemba nor Rod Allen on tonight's Tigers broadcast. The duo gone for the rest of the season after what's been described as a physical altercation Tuesday night when the Tigers were in Chicago. Instead of ignoring the rather large elephant in the room, it was addressed at the beginning of, of the broadcast. Mara McDonald live over at Comerica with what fans are uh, saying about it tonight, Mara. Well, Devin, everybody's heard about it. Everybody has an opinion on it, and I couldn't find anybody who said they didn't want to see both Allen and Pemba come back. It, opinions range from, yeah, Rod and Mario need to come back to, well, I don't really care. Tonight, the only fireworks were on the field. No booth brouhaha. Both Mario and Pemba and Rod Allen were conspicuously absent from the broadcast after what has been described as a physical altercation over a chair during Tuesday night's Tigers Sox game in Chicago. It's been a tough day for us here at Fox Sports Detroit. We are not comfortable being the subject of the news, but unfortunately, that's the situation that we are in. Allen and Pemba have been a duo for 16 seasons. If you say Rod and Mario at this ballpark, Park. Everybody knows who you're talking about. I do hope they come back. I mean, I'm a big fan. I mean, who isn't? I mean, they're great together. I mean, they're not great friends, but I mean, you got to work through it. That's Your job. Ti that's Tigers baseball. That's just Tigers right. baseball that's to that. the fullest, honestly. I think everybody deserves a second chance. You know, I, I, I think it you have to get to the root of it, the problem, uh, as far as what. It, what it was about in the first place. It's certainly no secret among fans that Impemba and Allen are not pals off the job, but they were surprised it got physical. I understand too, because I was in the Navy on the ship and you were away for six months. These guys are traveling all the time. They're kind of stuck with each other. And I'm sure things sometimes get a little carried away, but I wouldn't think to that effect, you know. But they're professionals, <laughs> you know? They're professionals. They, they should know better. Back here live, we got a lot of that. People were very surprised that it got to that point. Uh, the replacements, uh, Matt Shepard, Kirk Gibson, they'll be filling in for the rest of the season. We're at Comerica Park tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah, a little drama to end the season in a, in a season that we didn't think there was going to be much uh, drama going into finishing that off. All right, Mara. Uh, now to the principal of Dakota High School who will spend tonight sleeping on the roof of his school. At the end of last school year, Principal Paul Sibley told his students if they raised $20,000 during their annual walkathon, he would sleep on the roof of the high school. The students met that goal and he and his son packed plenty of warm blankets for tonight. He plans to show his students that he supports everything they do. We really work hard to connect with our students and, and work hard to help them see that it's about having fun. You know, it's about doing things to help other people and it's about, you know, showing them that we care about them, that we support them and everything they do. The money from the fundraiser went to providing items not covered by the school budget, such as library books and student scholarships. Tomorrow, thousands of people are going to fill the cast corridor for the 41st annual Dally in the Alley. One of a kind festival. It started back in the 70s, actually, as uh, just an art fair at the time, but it has turned into a huge celebration of, yes, art, but also music and food and a sense of community. Tons of local bands, food stands, and yes, the art booths will be there too. It all gets started at 11 tomorrow morning. It goes until 11 tomorrow night. If you've never taken in Dally in the Alley, it really is one of a kind. Check it out. I didn't realize it's been going on since this. 41 years, yeah. Incredible. something. All right, new tariffs on China could soon make some Apple products more expensive. What products could be impacted and why it could only get worse coming up. And he may not have had much experience, but he sure knew what to do. Tonight, a rookie deputy opens up on how he saved another man's life. But first, it's the kind of thing you can only find in Detroit. This was the most mind-blowing experience. I don't think you could get any more in Detroit. Literally only in Detroit. <laughs> A skater's paradise where you probably wouldn't expect one. It's uniquely Detroit, and it's next.